The past and future came together when Erica created a special painting in high school. Little did she know that the art piece foretold the birth of her son Luke seven years later and carried a secret about his past. Luke's grandmother Lisa revealed the unique insight about Luke's past life, a premonition not reported by media stories when Luke's memories leaped into the public eye in 2013. Lisa told us, I have a special chair in my bedroom that my daughter Erica painted for a high school senior art project in 2001. She painted flames and smoke in what appears as city buildings on the chair, along with two prominent faces, a white woman with Erica's features and a smiling, happy young black woman. For her to paint a black woman's face was a bit unusual since Erica did not have African-American schoolmates or friends. I loved the painted chair so much that after she went to college, she agreed that I could keep it. The reason Erica painted the chair the way she did began to fall into place one day when she asked her son, Luke, what he wanted to name the ladybug crawling on the porch step. My grandson, Luke, was two at the time, 2010, and said Pam, an odd name since he didn't know anyone named Pam. From that point onward, he named stuffed animals or plastic toy figurines Pam if he thought they were girls. If he thought a toy was a boy, he named it Lukey. When Luke was a few months shy of his fourth birthday in 2012, Erica was decorating for Valentine's Day and asked him to pick out a name for a pink and red owl. Of course, he chose Pam. Erica asked, why? I think it's a nice name. But why? Where did you even hear that name? Who is Pam? Well, I was. What do you mean you were? I used to be, but I died. I went up to heaven, I saw God, and then God pushed me back down. Luke made a pushing motion with his little hands. When I woke up, I was a baby in your tummy and you named me Luke. Did Pam have a family? Well, she didn't have any kids like you, mom. Her kids didn't live with her. Where did she live? I don't wanna talk about it, okay? The conversation was finished because it bothered him to think about it. Erica and her husband Nick stared at each other in confusion. They had never discussed God or heaven in front of Luke, let alone life and death. Erica had been quite adamant about not introducing formal religion to their children. You can imagine their surprise when Luke calmly spoke of God in heaven. Nick told Erica in private, stop asking him about it. You don't want to put any ideas into his head that aren't already there. So everything after that always came up unprompted. Months would go by, then Luke would spontaneously say something. Erica kept me updated. Even though we suspected something unbelievable, something on another level, we tried to remain open-minded and come up with rational explanations. Luke took his blurted out explanation of his death, heaven, new life experience in a straightforward manner as though everyone should know these things. Even though reincarnation is something that I had read about, Erica and Nick were not interested in spiritual topics. Nick is a complete non-believer, a scientific kind of guy, but when Erica asked for help, I suggested Dr. Ian Stevenson's book, 20 Cases Suggestive of Reincarnation. They initially found the book interesting. It pretty much convinced Erica and me of Luke's reincarnation, but Nick was still perplexed, and he probably did not entirely read it. However, I sensed that he felt some comfort with the idea that the scientific world had taken notice of children with similar experiences and that a credentialed individual had written the book. Luke's parents were careful with what he watched on TV. They kept his childhood upbringing innocent and played Baby Einstein, Disney, and Pixar movies. However, one time when Luke was four, he witnessed a large building explode on TV. He became so agitated that Erica turned the TV off. She told him, it is okay, no one was hurt. Yeah, but I died. I don't like to think about it, it makes me sad. Do you remember how you died? Well, yeah, it was a fire. Then he made a hand motion like he was jumping off a building. Was it like on TV? Luke said there was no explosion, it was just a fire. He said that the fire was in Chicago. Luke had never been to Chicago. He talks about a tall building in a big city where he walked a lot and took the train. Luke's family was living 300 miles from Chicago. They had never traveled there nor had any connections to anyone in Chicago. 
Once Luke talks about his memories of the fire, his night terrors ended. Before that, Erica had sometimes found him shaking and curled up by their bedroom door. One time he was screaming with his eyes wide open as he pointed up to the ceiling. He sometimes ran a fever with the dreams. I later learned that a child's night terrors are a characteristic symptom in cases of a violent death in a past life. In retrospect, Luke's fears as a two-year-old now made sense in light of his memories of leaping out of a flaming building. He was obsessed with fire safety in the home and was cautious about heights or anything that might be hot or dangerous. He was also fearful about crossing streets. With all the information that Luke gave us, we knew that somewhere out there, there had to be a Pam. No child this young could know about death, heaven, Chicago, trains, and the names of Pam's family members. Erica was driven to do online research to see if she could verify his memories. One night she called and said, I think I found Pam, a 31-year-old black woman named Pamela Robinson, died in March 1993 in a Chicago fire in the Paxton Hotel. 18 other people died. Two people jumped out a window to their deaths. Erica's intuition was at work that night. She also found another clue in Pam's obituary. Her father's name was Arthur. After Luke had mentioned that he was Pam, Erica asked if he remembered anyone else. He said, I remember Arthur. We didn't take much stock in that answer until we saw that Arthur was, in fact, Pam's dad's name. Luke himself never mentioned that Arthur was Pam's dad. Everything fit with four major clues, Chicago, Fire, Pam, and Arthur. Now that Erica had confirmed that Pam was a black woman, other statements Luke had made over the past few years made sense, such as, before I was a baby, I had black hair, or, Mom, I used to have earrings like that when I was a girl. The final confirmation came one night at bedtime. Erica casually asked, So Luke, what color was Pam's skin? He said, Duh. Black. 